scripture reading today for Pastor Brian is going to come out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And it says, Now brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve, after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living through, the, through some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born, as 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Pastor Brian. Thank you, Bernie. God bless you all. Thank you, praise team. Thank you for the songs of hope that you gave us this morning. Everything that was sang today was uh, laced with hope this morning. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. I am not alone. Um, glorious day, what is that? It's like something that is here now and something that is coming in the future. And then if you need that hope today, cry out to Jesus. A lot of emotion today, a lot of uh, feeling close to God today as we worship. Thank you, worship team, for leading us into the presence of the Lord together. And I know that you sensed it there as well. Um, there's something about it when the hope grips our heart and grabs a hold of our emotions and we feel close to God. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what we all need. We need hope this morning. And I want to preach to you today on the hope reminder, because we need reminders. A friend of mine who wrote a song, recorded by New Song, Russ Lee wrote a song called Hope. And in the song, he makes some statements like this. I could go for 40 days and nights without something to eat. That's questionable for me, but maybe Russ could do it. And then he says, I can go for hours and hours without a drop to drink. He says, I can hold my breath for minutes at a time, but I can't live one second without hope in my life. And that's the truth today. You see, the thing about the gospel is the gospel is good news. And for those who have received the gospel, that good news brings us hope. When Paul is writing to the Corinthians, he's writing to them to remind them of some things that I believe is totally geared toward getting hope restored in people. And right here where we are, coming to the end of April 2020, an April that none of us would have thought would happen like this, we need our hope restored today. And we do that through the power of God's Spirit and through the teaching and preaching of His Word today. Amen? This is something that I believe uh, we all need this morning. So let's define hope a little bit. And then let's talk about how important it is to remember things. I was thinking about this this morning. How many of you now watch a movie, and when you see people really close to each other, you think they shouldn't be so close together? And then you see people in a store or something, in a movie or on television, and if they're not wearing a mask or something, you think something's wrong. Isn't it interesting that it's only been six weeks and already we have lost a little bit of touch of how it used to be before this all happened? Guys, that's a negative thing. What's happening to us right now is negative. It doesn't make us feel good. <clears throat> but we also have some positive things to remember and some positive things to look forward to because I believe we're going to come out of this whenever God says we come out of this. And I'm ready. I'm ready to move forward in, in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God never did shut down. And the kingdom of God is moving forward today. And if you want to be involved in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is available to you. And if you need hope today, hope is available to you. But I'm going to show you today that your hope is going to be based a lot about what you believe. You see, if you believe everything that you're told today, you're going to live in a hopeless state. 
If you believe everything that comes down the line, have you noticed that in our world now, that particularly in media and in the political world, lies are told every day, but they are uh, portrayed to be the truth. And they are held to to be the truth. And maybe six months later, they're discovered to be the lie, but no one remembers. It's like the lie that's told today, six months from now, won't even matter. In fact, you can show a video of someone telling a lie six months ago, and they will still say they never said that. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't base our hope on falsehood. We, face, we base our hope on the truth of God's Word. Now, what is hope exactly? It is the confident expectation of a desired outcome. Confident expectation of a desired outcome. What is it that we're looking for today? I can tell you that if you're looking for things to, to get in our political world different, you're probably going to live hopelessly. If you're looking for the enemy to stop lying, you're probably not going to have very much hope. But ladies and gentlemen, if you put your focus on the Word of God, you will have hope restored because the desired outcome of the Christian to walk with him today and to live with him in the future is going to happen. The Bible talks about Jesus coming back as a blessed hope. And I hope to preach on that very soon. So what's the difference then in real hope and false hope? The difference would be between hope and false hope is whether or not it is based on the truth. You see, I can't afford to live my life in fairy tales. I can't afford to base my life on fantasy island. I can't live my life on falsehood. I have to live my life on something that's real and true. And when I do that, it gives me hope. Ladies and gentlemen, hope is essential. And that's what's being taken away from us today. And so we as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, we are here to testify today that there is hope in Jesus Christ. And that hope is essential and life-giving. So why do we need a reminder? Anyone that has children knows that reminders are necessary. Anyone who works in church life knows that reminders are necessary. In business life, reminders are necessary. I don't know about you, but I need reminders every day. That's why I, I like to write something down the night before so I will remember the next day. Reminders are something that help us keep our hope where it needs to be. You see, hope is built on faith which is anchored to the truth. But ladies and gentlemen, hope is easily switched. Without the reminders, we tend to switch the hope that we have in heaven and change it to what we can see here on earth. The enemy wants to switch your hope to that which, uh, it, from that which you believe, which is faith, to that which you see, which is here right now. The enemy would love for you to stop believing the truths of God's word and focus in on what you see around you. It's the same thing that happened with Peter. Peter had all the hope in the world that he could step out of a boat and walk with Jesus until he switched his, his element of truth and faith and began to look at the problems. Ladies and gentlemen, the enemy, and that includes what's coming to us on a regular basis from media, social media, from the, from, even from the news, everything we're hearing is designed to get us off of looking at Jesus and looking at the waves. It's designed to make you and me afraid. It's designed to keep our focus off of truth and eternity and look around here and say, my, my, what are we going to do? And you know, I can only take so much of that, can't you? I can't take my brain and submerge it in a full day's worth of negative, what I believe is suspicious when it even comes to the truth. I can't listen to that all day long. It's important for me to come back to the foundation and get my hope back where it belongs and so that I know who I am and I know what I'm here to do and I know where I'm going. Satan wants to switch that. He wants to turn you off of that so that you look at this world. I think it looks like this. He starts with a lie. You see, real hope is built on the truth. 
So he gives you a lie. And you need to realize that every lie has some element of truth to it. Because it would not be believable if it didn't have a little bit of truth mixed in. So Satan starts with some mixed truth. And then he gives you the, the ability to put your faith in that mixed truth. And that faith is powerless. When you have mixed truth, powerless faith, eventually you will have lost hope. So we need to be reminded today. My message today, and I'm privileged today to tell you that our missionary, Babu John, our missionary to Asia and the, the country of India is going to join us at the end of this message. And he's going to help me preach today about the reminders that we need. Reminders that Jesus is still on the throne. Reminders of what the scripture says. Reminders that Jesus was dead, but he's yet alive. And give us back the hope that comes in Jesus Christ. Reminders has always been a part of the Bible. Jacob in Genesis chapter 34 built an altar and he called it Bethel to remind him of the time that he spent with God. When the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, God said, establish a ceremony that you have every year called Passover. What was the purpose? To remind you. We come over to crossing the Jordan. When the Israelites were ready to go into the promised land, God told them, take some stones from the middle of the, of the river so that when your children ask you, you can tell them what the Lord has done for you. A reminder, when Jesus was getting ready to leave, to die and then, and then eventually ascend, he gave the church something for what? To remember. Reminders are very, very important to us. And so here in this scripture, Paul talks to the Corinthians and he gives them a reminder of some things. And I want to go through a few of those this morning. Number one, Paul reminded them of what happened. When Paul began the letter, began this chapter, he said, Brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. He reminds them of what happened when he first met these individuals. It came down to very simply said, he said, I preached, you received, and you stand. You see, he's going back to the church and he's reminding them of what actually happened when the gospel first came to them. Is that important to us today? Absolutely. Because if you're going to have real hope that's going to endure, you need to sometimes go back to where it actually all began. I think it's important in my church that I planted in West Tennessee, New Life Baptist Church, we had a membership class. And in the membership class, if you wanted to become a member of New Life Baptist Church, you would come to the class, and we would explain how we do things, and we would try to give people an idea of what they could expect from us, what we would expect for them. And one of the things we did uh, in the membership class is we would talk about the people's testimony. You see, research has shown that church members are better church members when they're Christians. We have discovered that now that doesn't mean that everyone that's in the church is a Christian because I can testify to you today that that's not true there's a lot of folks in the church that have never seen anything to do with the grace of God they have what we call a mental assent to the gospel they've heard a story they kind of believe the story. It, they liken it to a fairy tale. You know, when you're a child, you read the fairy tales, and at the end, everything comes out well. And so this resurrection story about Jesus keeping me out of hell, that sounds like a good fairy tale. I think I'll, think I'll sign up for that. But ladies and gentlemen, the gospel is way more than a fairy tale, and it's way more than just a good story that we kind of believe. It is actually life-giving. And when you come to the gospel, you receive the gospel, and you, when you do that, you have to lay down this life in order to have this life. And I just personally believe, and I believe the scripture backs me up here, that anyone who is born again has a testimony. And I never will forget this. And my friend from Florida is, is listening right now, and he knows where I'm going. But this guy named Mark Steele became my friend, coming to my church. He was working on my house. And he just kind of liked going to the church, and he was ready to join the church one day. 
And he came into the membership class and we were talking about testimonies and somebody would say, well, this is how it was when I was saved and this is how it was when I was saved. We got to Mark and I said, hey, Mark, tell us what it was like when you got saved. His answer was theologically striking. He said, well, you know. And I'm like, really? I wonder today if we were to call you here And have you speak there and tell people what it was like when you got saved? Would you have anything to say? You know what Mark realized at that moment? He was religious but lost. He wasn't, he didn't have that hope because he had a mixture of truth and lies. I guess he thought he was good enough. Maybe You know, he grew up in a church or maybe he was uh, baptized at a young age or something. I don't know exactly what it was. But ladies and gentlemen, he didn't have what it was. And he then, because he had no testimony, he realized he needed to be saved. And he gave his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is still saved today. You know, that I know that he's still saved because he's still my friend after 20 years. And that's saying something, amen. Paul said, I preached, you received, and you stand. I remember hearing a story from evangelist Charles Shipman years ago. He used to hold revival meetings, and back in those days, you'd have week-long meetings, and evangelists would come in and preach, and this guy was one of the best preachers I ever heard. You know why? Because he was somebody that was completely honest and transparent. This man came and gave his testimony everywhere he preached. And his testimony was this. He was actually a preacher of God's word before he actually knew Jesus Christ as his Savior. Now people would say that just can't be. If you think that that can't be, that might be telling off on the fact that you don't really understand salvation. Satan's in the business of making lost people believe that they're saved and making saved people believe that they're lost. There's confusion there. How will you know the difference? How do you know whether you're saved or not? Salvation is based on the scriptures, based on the gospel, and based upon a very real thing that happens to you on the inside. The Bible says that the same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ dwells in you. And if someone is spiritually born again, resurrected from the grave, tell me they don't know that something happened. Praise God, something did happen. And Paul was reminding them of what happened. So I would ask you today, What happened when you came to know to the Lord? Point number two, he reminded them of what I received. You see, when Paul preached, he didn't come out and preach things that he hadn't experienced. He didn't come out and try to give away what he didn't have. You see, that's confusion. My friend Charles Shipman lived a confusing life. He was trying to preach something that he didn't have. I remember in his testimony, one time he was sharing with somebody that they needed to repent, believe the gospel, and he said the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, when did that happen to you? Another evangelist friend that I know used to have revival meetings like, like uh, uh, they used to do, and everyone would get together, and he would talk about testimonies, and he would say, everybody's got a testimony. If you're saved, you've got a testimony. He said, tell you what we're going to do today. I'm going to just go through here and call people and you you just come up here and give your testimony publicly. Immediately, half of the room got scared. You know why they got afraid? They got afraid because if they did, first of all, probably because no one likes to publicly speak. Secondly, because maybe they didn't have anything to say. I think right now, if I called Brian Comer up here and said, tell me about your salvation story, he could tell me. I think Tim Johnson, if he come up here right now and said, tell me about your salvation testimony, he could tell me. If we could get Mark Steele on Zoom sometime to tell you his testimony, he could tell you his testimony. Let me ask you today, what exactly happened? When Paul preached, he said, I'm just giving you what I've received. You know what he, get, what he received? You know what Paul received? Paul received three things. First, he received the truth that Jesus was alive. You see, false salvation is based upon a dead Savior. Even if you think The story is right that Jesus rose from the dead. If you don't have a real connection with the resurrected Lord to the fact that the resurrected Lord has the rights over your life, he can direct your life, and there are some things you do because he says so and you follow his will, you seek to please him. If you don't have that kind of a relationship with him, then your God is still dead. 
And you're walking around trying to serve a dead Lord. No wonder there's no hope in your life. You see, if your hope is based upon mixed truth and powerless faith, you won't have any hope. But if your hope is based upon the fact that Jesus is alive, you've got all kinds of hope. The Apostle Paul was a man named Saul, and he did not believe Jesus was alive. He did not believe he was alive, and he was willing to take Christians' lives who were confessing that Jesus was alive. And so he's going off to do his, his deeds, and he runs straight into the resurrected Jesus. I would dare say if anyone's been born again today, you have run straight into the resurrected Jesus Christ. So Paul said, I have discovered the truth. Jesus is alive. Not only did he have that, but he discovered the faith. Jesus is Lord. When Paul came into the presence of Jesus, he hit the dust. I mean, right off the bat, he surrendered to the fact that there's somebody greater than me. And the words came to him and said, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? He understood that Jesus was the truth. He understood that Jesus was Lord. And now he has real hope. And ladies and gentlemen, it changed Paul. You can't have real hope unless there's been a real change in your life. Because if there's not a real change in your life, then you're still living the old life. And the old life can never give you hope. You'll live every day of your life looking for something better. Well, if we get somebody different in the presidency, it'll be better. If we get a different governor, it'll be better. If we get, get a different mayor, it'll be better. If we get a different something going on, it'll be better. If the economy's better, it'll be better. We think it all day long. But it never really changes the hope inside of us. I'm glad when our country's doing better. And I'm glad when people are working. And I'm glad when we don't have pandemics. But ladies and gentlemen, all of those things are not our hope. Because Jesus said things are going to be difficult, particularly in the last days. And I believe we're there. I believe what I see is the ability right now for the whole world to come together in one accord. I heard a man named Andrew Cuomo say that. Now, now Andrew, it was Chris. He said, look, we're all together now. We're all in this together. One people, one family, forever. All under the name of let's stay safe. Does that not bother you? I mean, we've got people right now that are, that are advocating. Let's all come around the idea. Let's all be one. It's just crazy. Let's everybody stay home and everybody be good to one another. What kind of crazy mess is that? There is no hope coming out of there. We were not created to live this way, ladies and gentlemen. The Apostle Paul was doing what the world said. He was a Christian killer, but he became a Christian martyr. He went from persecutor to preacher. And if they had social media in that day, he would have been excoriated on social media. He said that he preached Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Greeks. He went from being considered wise to being considered foolish. And he simply gave out what he had. He reminded them of what happened. He reminded them of what he had received. And he reminded him of what he said. He brought them back to the fact. He brought them back to the fact that there was hope in the gospel. He gave them what he had said. He said, listen, Christ died according to the scriptures. Ladies and gentlemen, hope is built upon the Scriptures because the Scriptures cannot be broken according to Jesus. And as you heard Bernie say this morning, the songs from the New Testament are related to what was in the Old Testament. You see, the Old Testament was not done away with. It was simply fulfilled. And Paul said, I told you that there was Christ who died according to the Scriptures. What Scriptures do we have? We have the Scriptures of the Old Testament that are linked to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 25, verse 25 through 27, Jesus explaining to the, the men at Emmaus, he said, ought not the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. Paul preached the scripture. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why so many people don't have hope, they're not preaching the scriptures. We're preaching some kind of feel-good message, some kind of motivational speech where everybody looks at life and they say, all your problems are Goliath. 
and you're David and you're going to overcome without any thought of what the scripture actually means, without any preaching of the scripture. Listen, you cannot be saved listening to little sermonettes that vary away from the scripture. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul preached the scripture today. I declare the scripture to you. He gave the scriptures. He talked about the cross. Psalm 22. Listen to this. Listen to what the psalmist said a long time before Jesus came along. He said, all who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. Ladies and gentlemen, everything that was said centuries beforehand was fulfilled in Jesus. The cross has always been on God's mind. The scriptures and the cross and in the resurrection. The Bible talks about in Psalm 16, 8 through, through 10. He says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord with him at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. Long time before the resurrection, the Old Testament psalmist is talking about that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where our hope is found. You can find hope in the scriptures. You can find hope in the cross. You can find hope in the resurrection. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be reminded. I don't care what's being said today. If something is being said that is opposite the word of God, the word of God is correct and what you're hearing is a lie. You can say amen right there because that's the truth. And when everything else is done, when the kingdoms of this world is done, the kingdom of God will still stand because it's built upon the word of God. And so today here at Life Church, we present and we preach the Word of God, the Scriptures, the foundation of our hope. Why do we have hope? Because the Scriptures say we have hope. What do the Scriptures declare? They declare that there was one who died for us. There was one who rose again for us. There was one who is coming back for us. There is one who says he will never leave us, never forsake us. We got hope today. I don't know what tomorrow looks like. But I know he's already there. And then Paul reminds them of what he received and reminds them of what he said. And then he reminds them of what others saw. What, uh, what others saw was this. Paul says many others saw Jesus alive. That's not my message today, but it's good. Many others saw Jesus alive. He, he goes on to say Cephas saw him and then James and he says the 12 and he says 500 people at one time. And if you want to fact check it, he says, some of them are still alive. The resurrection of Jesus is a story that cannot be debunked. There's no explanation to the empty tomb other than the fact that he's not there. Praise God. And since he's not there, I'm not there. And so what he's talking about now, he's talking about witnesses. Witnesses of people that saw the resurrected Jesus. Witnesses of people who saw that Jesus was alive and saw their life change. And that started there in Jerusalem. It started there in Israel and it went around the world. And before it ever came to the United States of America, it showed up in India. There's a man that loves God that is serving the country of India right now who is a witness that Jesus is alive because Jesus has changed his life. And if it's okay right now, Pastor Babu, I'd love for you to jump in right here and tell people what you've seen and witness to the glory of the resurrected Jesus right now. Are you there, brother? Yes, brother. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Life Church. Praise the Lord. It is, uh, again, another wonderful day, a privilege to be with you all, to talk to you through the social media. What an amazing message from uh, Brother Brian Anderson. I'm overwhelmed, reminded that hope is still there. Praise the Lord. And, uh, <clears throat> and the power of the resurrection that uh, person like me, person like you, thousands of people, that came to life through the power of the resurrection. Once we were dead in sin, but by the grace of God, 
we are born again. I'm so glad to hear from you and uh, see the church today. Uh, it becomes so impossible for believers to come together. We never thought this will happen. And the uh, whole world is under panic situation. Uh, people don't know what to do. So much of plans they had for the future. So many people planned their life tomorrow, next year, after five years, they planned for their children, their job, their businesses. But everything stumbled down right now. Things don't happen in the way that we decide or plan. But God has different plans. I want to read a words from... Uh, Uh, book of James, chapter 4, verse 13, 14. Book of James, chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Verse 14, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow or what is your life, it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. We make plans. We are not planned our life to go through the afflictions. We are not prepared to go through all kinds of uh, pandemic or COVID-19. We are planning for a safe sailing. Then comes the storm. But as a Christian, we are not going to focus on the troubles, but we are going to focus on the promises of God. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is the confidence in me, allows me to go through this peacefully and joyfully. That is the strength in me, because the gospel, the Jesus, that is within me, it gives me the strength. What all Paul had gone through, Paul reminds his people in Philippians chapter 1 verse 12, it is a reminder again. Paul is telling his people, Philippians 1 12, but I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me, how actually it turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. I mean, what a prospective way of looking at life. Is that means there was no struggle in his life? Is that means there was no obstacle in his life? Is that means he is out of the troubles? Peace is not. Absence of uh, struggles. Peace is the presence of God. He, the presence of God. And Paul is telling that because of the gospel changed me. I was a murderer, chief of all sinners, killing Christians. But now, God changed my life. He changed me. My old man, dead. I become new creation. Where are we today? Are we really a new creation? Are we dead to ourselves? Are we being crucified with Christ? Nevertheless, I live, but Christ liveth in me. We always, uh, Pastor Brian was talking about the salvation. We sometimes we feel like we are saved. Sometimes we act like we are saved. Sometimes we behave like we are saved. Are we really saved? Did the gospel change us? If the gospel changed us, if the, the power of the gospel changed us, our behavior changes, we bear a testimony. Then we count these all things, all these struggles for the advancement of the gospel. To preach the gospel, to go and preach. Bible says every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Every knee shall bow. Some critic people say that how it would happen. A small virus, even men's naked eye cannot see, 
now everybody is talking about that in around the globe even the villages tribal areas leper colonies everywhere people talking about virus covid 19 is it impossible for the creator of the universe that everybody may come to know christ that happens when you and me go and preach the gospel i just want to let you know that i am so blessed to know jesus as my personal savior because someone share the love of christ with me i always say that you and me are missionaries god has changed our life completely changed our life things i used to do i do them no more gospel changed us paul reminds us paul is telling that the gospel that is changed me i am giving to you i am sharing the same thing with you that's what exactly me pastor brian all the servant of god do that every day on and off this is our chance once again to check to take an inventory and think lord are you in my heart am i really born again am i being an instrument of god am i being a weapon that god can use i just want to tell you and thank you church for being so faithful in supporting the ministry you have been such a blessing in the time of trouble india is going through such a turmoil trouble india has been shut down for many days now almost a month they are thinking about opening up in next month because of the shutdown people don't have any job they cannot go out even in our orphanages we can't go out and get vegetables or any other groceries there are so many people starving our villages many many church pastors because nobody comes to their church no tithe no offerings they're struggling people are starving there are there are fishermen there are farmers there are people that work laborers nobody has job there is no stimulation package in india but they trusting we are trying to provide at least rice or some pulses to them that they may survive please keep them in your prayer they are our brothers and sisters in christ i always say that remind you again we are related we are blood relations because we all are bought by the blood of christ that has changed our life the gospel has changed our life paul reminds us again that gospel we changed him that is has, that has been given to us so he takes all his pain his agony his persecution everything he takes for the furtherance of the gospel with the law may the god of peace help us not to concentrate on the present situations but concentrate on the promises of god let the presence of god take away the struggles and burdens from our life let us not be fearful fear is the opposite thing of belief but we need to have more and more faith in god that hope that we will we shall see him one day because he promised us that we will go with him we are not losers either he comes or if we die of covid 19 covid 19 can only kill our body not our souls paul says that the spirit of the lord has been put in this earthen vessel this is the vessel we have to live one day apart but the soul will get back to him praise the lord may the god bless you all thank you pastor brian thank you church thank you everyone for the help and praying for us may the god continue to bless you and use you as a tremendous instrument in the days to come be a joyful noise make a joyful noise may the god bless you all thank you so much thank you babu can you hear me yes thank you for sharing with us brother oh my pleasure bro i i have no i have known this this brother for, since 1999 and he has faithfully served the lord for from the time i've known him for 21 years and i speak from life church and for everyone that's a part of our church 
We count it an honor to know you and to be a part of what you're doing to reaching out to people that, that need uh, help in, in the worst way. Thank you for being faithful and thank you for loving the country of India and the orphanages that, that you minister to and we're privileged to be a part of what you're doing. Thank you very much. So in the coming days, we're going to do what we can to send some relief to help there. As God has given to us, we turn around and we give as well. And if you would like to participate in, in helping in this need that Babu has shared with, you can, you can always send the old-fashioned old way. We still receive checks, 716 East 3rd Street, or you go to the Church Center app and you click on uh, the uh, uh, Great Commission Ministries or designate it or just send us an email or something. Let us know where you want it to go. But uh, we're going to do what we can. You know, we know here at Life Church we can't provide every need, but we can provide for the ones that God puts in front of us this way. And as God has always Amen. given to us, we're going to do the same. And why do we do that? Why do we give? We give without any fear. You know why? Because we know who owns it all. I love what Amen. you said, Babu, that, that COVID-19 can only kill the body. Only kill the body. Are you still with me, bro? Yes, I am. I remember you telling me one time that when you work in India, it was a common knowledge that if you're a Christian pastor or leader, that your life was, was in danger every day. Is that true? Absolutely, yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, once, once you become a, a child of God, a missionary, even when uh, the day you are graduating from the Bible college, my uh, Dr. Emma Thomas, there was something called the Mod Ears Oath. You know, you make an oath. Uh, the last day you're getting the graduation, uh, he says that, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're all going to make an oath, say that even to be killed in the field, for the God's sake of the gospel, I am ready. That's when you get the certificate. Otherwise, you can back up even the last minute and say that I don't want to go to the field. Huh. Because anybody become a missionary, a pastor, know that it may can happen to him. You know, many church villages, pastors that we lost in the past, many times we don't know even what happened to them. We know there were even pastors, they tied around a pole and uh, slit the neck. Uh, you know, the throat, uh, you know, like a seven years ago, and the family was drawn out of the village. So these things happen all the time. So once a child of God make a decision, that really comes, I have been crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live, but right, Christ buddy. lives in me. Man, you are no more alive. <laughs> right, buddy. And, and you know, that's, <laughs> that's just like the gospel today that we're preaching today. We Amen. believe in the resurrected Jesus Christ. And in order to have him as your savior, you can't just believe the fairy tale. You can't just That's believe right. a, good, a good story, can you? You just have to believe in the truth that Christ died according to the scriptures. He was buried. He rose again. And when we put our faith in a resurrected Lord, then we have resurrected life. And then we follow him and we follow him every day in hope. Our hope is not that we'll be martyred. Our hope is that we have eternal life right now and we do not Amen. live in fear of what anyone can do to us. You see, when you have that, no one can take that from you. Nothing can Absolutely. take the hope of heaven from you. And I pray that you joining us today, that you've been encouraged today by hearing the scriptures taught, hearing from our missionary, and having the, the challenge to let's get back to doing business in the name of the king. The kingdom of God has not shut down. The kingdom of God is moving Amen. forward. Count me in. And Babu, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you all. So if you want to know Jesus as your Savior today, the Bible says repent and believe the good news. The Bible says if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And when you have 
that faith based on truth, you have hope. The very last scripture that I had prepared to read to you is from Romans chapter 9 and verse 33. Listen to what the scripture says, as it is written. Why does it say as it is written? Because it's in the Old Testament. Old Testament, New Testament, they all point to Jesus. As it is written, see, I lay in Zion a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. Hallelujah today. We have hope because we have trusted in Jesus who is anchored to the scripture and he cannot fail. Put your trust in him today. Hope up today. Look forward to seeing you again. This coming.